Hey YouTube, Lizzie B here. As you can see, I'm in my car. Yes, I am driving. Yes, the video is gonna be shaky. Yes, I am not making eye contact um, because I'm focusing on the road right now. <laughs> um, so don't expect too much eye contact going on right now. But regardless, um, I wanted to make this video from my car because as I mentioned in a lot of my videos, I'm super duper busy. And sometimes I'm not, a, I'm not home a lot, to be honest with you. I'm not home a lot. And I know I always talk about it in my videos, but you know, this time I was like, you know what, let me just take this camera on the road. I have a mount that I can hold up or whatever, or, you know, post up or whatever. And, um, so that's what I'm going to do today. But, um, I was inspired to make this video because I was listening to Lady C and JT the, um, yesterday and the video that, well, actually, I was listening to them on podcast. They have a YouTube channel, but I prefer to listen to the podcast because I'm always driving. I'm always out and about, and um, it's easier. You know, we, with YouTube, you have to look at it, or, like, you can't, you know, turn off your phone or whatever, turn off the screen and be able to listen to it. And so, um, it kind of drains the battery a bit for me. So, I, I like to listen to podcasts. Um, and their podcast is just one of my favorite XJW podcast. I'm saying it's one of my favorites, but it really is, is my favorite because, um, I just love them. I think they're a great couple and everything that they say, they speak very clearly, like, and they sound very reasonable, very, um, level-headed, you know, and it just, it makes what they're saying so, um, logical you know what I mean it's logical and and they're funny too they crack me up so <laughs> I'm like giving a mini commercial for JT and Lady C but I really love their videos and it was very instrumental in my waking up after um you know once my mom kind of revealed certain information to me I started to do my own research and of course as many of you have done and, and know um you will probably like go through all a ton of YouTube videos to, to do your research and excuse me and um you, you know you're gonna come across a lot of different ex jehovah's witnesses they all have their own little flavor to them and i like i that's the flavor that that i liked i like the just you know trying to be positive and moving forward and that's the thing that's why I even bring up that I was listening to their video um, or listening to their podcast yesterday because I was so inspired after having listening um, listened to it um, you know I'm 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 still in a sense like you know I feel like at this point I've woken up <laughs> but occasionally I'll listen to their podcast or like I'll go on YouTube and look at videos because you know I like to see what other ex Jehovah's Witnesses are up to and then I realize that I don't really talk too much about what I'm personally up to like I'll talk about certain subjects and stuff but I don't really um, give too much information about myself and I'm not saying that I'm gonna you know start telling telling everything telling all my business but I do intend to kind of give more um, you know personal insight into why I do what I do and what I'm doing and that kind of thing so um, with that said with their video they had mentioned that the best way to get back at the watchtower is to live your best life you know is to be successful and that kind of thing and personally that's what I've, I've always set out to do even at times where I failed and where I was indoctrinated um, I always wanted you know, I was like, you know, I don't want to live the full-on pioneer Jehovah's Witness lifestyle. I would like to, you know, go to school and I and I want to have friends outside of Jehovah's Witnesses. So I always attempted to do that. But of course, when I was indoctrinated, it, you know, doing those things was accompanied by a lot of guilt, by a lot of just mixed messages, depression. You know, I felt like I was that, you know, God didn't love me. Like there were so many feelings um, of of shame and just a lot of negativity that came along with my trying to live my best life because I felt like guilty about it you know what I mean and so after having woken up I realized oh my god like I felt free I felt like somebody had unlocked a cage and I was able to walk out and I'm just like oh my god now I can 
do what I want to do and I don't have to feel bad about that all these years I didn't even realize a lot of the feelings of guilt that I had over things so a lot of that kind of came off of me and I was so happy to do that so I'm you know in a sense I've been trying to make up for lost time and just do whatever I want to do to the fullest and, and really trying to just move forward with my life and in their video they were saying that this is the best way to kind of get back at the watchtower so for me I was like oh that's a double whammy like I can you know get back at the watchtower by by being successful and through making these videos I wanted to inspire others to do the same thing and that's why with a lot of my videos I try to keep it light like I know that um, the Jehovah's Witness religion is responsible so for so many horrible horrible things um, I know that's responsible for so many horrible things um, family splitting up people dying like it just you know it, it goes on and on people being depressed people killing themselves like there's been a lot that people have had to experience so I totally understand a lot of the videos where people are very rightfully angry um, and I and there is definitely a place for those videos I watched a few when I had first woken up and then I had to I, I couldn't watch anymore because I wasn't in that place anymore but I'm sure there are a lot of people that are and it's very helpful to them for me um, I want to make videos and I want to as in my personal life um, be positive and move forward so that that you know if um, if anybody comes across my video they can see that it's possible to be happy and feel free and to feel guilt-free and not have the weight of, <laughs> of Armageddon over you because you decided that you want to love who you want to love or that you want to you know go to school or and learn more or you want to read a book that you love or that you want to watch a movie like I want you to know that it is possible there is freedom at the you know on the other side you know what I mean and so that's what I want to talk about again you know as I mentioned in my other video I have regrets <laughs> we all have regrets everybody has regrets um everybody that's been in that organization has regrets if you've left you know what I mean you're like oh what was I thinking but at the end of the day, um, you also have a life to live now. And when it comes to controlling groups, even controlling people, the worst thing that you can ever do is kind of like express your freedom. You know what I mean? Because who's going to stop you? Like, you know, who's going to check you? You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm making this video. I'm making it from my car because I'm going to a networking event and um i'm excited about this networking event um it's it's a barbecue too so that's awesome as you can see i'm like wearing a tank top so it's not like the most professional thing but that's what i'm going to right now i go to a lot of events like this and and you know i try to network and and also make new friends so this is not my everyday life but you know i thought i would take you with me um, because number one is a long drive like i always constantly have to you know i'm always in my car so, um, <laughs> so I'm sitting in traffic and just kind of like chatting with you guys. Cause I, you know, I want you to know what I, what I do in my life, but, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm like 100% happy. I don't think anybody in life is. I think that, um, you know, we're all going to have ups and downs and, and that there's no, um, there's no exception to that, even if you've left the Watchtower organization, but I will say that I, um, I do feel a lot happier within my industry and I'm also listening to myself a lot more and so when you do that um, it, it makes your decisions a lot easier you don't regret things as much when you don't have so much weight I feel like with the with the Jehovah's Witness organization there's a lot of superstition that comes with everything it's kind of like I don't know if, if you guys have ever heard of like you know step on a crack you break your mother's back and that kind of thing like I feel like that's the Jehovah's Witness religion like <laughs> everything is you know oh if you celebrate birthdays bad things might happen to you you know what I mean like um, just like in the Bible bad thing happened there's no rule in the Bible that says that you can't they're just saying something bad happened so it's a very superstitious kind of view like oh bad omen um, you know and so and you can apply that to a lot of the doctrine that they actually have for um, and not well actually you can apply that to a lot of the rules and unofficial unwritten rules that they have like the culture of the organization as well kind of like when somebody leaves and this is another thing that JT and Lady C were talking about um, in their podcast I'm telling y'all y'all need to subscribe if you get a chance 
but um something that they also mentioned was how they use ex Jehovah's Witnesses that left as an example and if they don't think if um if they if you leave they try to imply that your life has gone bad you know what I mean like now you know there's nothing left for you I remember this conversation that I was uh, privy to I, <laughs> I said I was privy to I think I was a part of it I don't know it just felt like a bunch of the pioneer sisters sitting around talking at each other kind of saying stuff to try and scare me and, and another sister that was a pioneer and um, in the conversation they were saying how they ran into some woman who used to go to the Keenum Hall I think the woman and her children and I think the woman was this fellowship so they only were able to speak to the children and they said something to the child like hey what are you doing these days and I don't remember what they said the girl said but I think I think the pioneer sister said that the young girl was struggling to find something to say and then and then she um she's like you know why she struggled because she's not doing anything she's doing nothing she's doing nothing and she just kept repeating that and I just remember how I felt hearing that for some odd reason I mean I've had a lot of conversations and I've forgotten all those conversations but that is one conversation that I will never forget because I just remember being like just I don't know I don't know how I felt I don't know if I believed it at the time I don't know if at the time I didn't believe it but I just was just really surprised at how nasty this sister was about what this young girl may or may not have been doing and and it was you know it was just really surprising but at the same time it kind of goes to show you that if you're not a Jehovah's Witness they feel like your life is bad things are going wrong and that kind of thing and so when I left the congregation that I was going to on the east coast in order to move west first I transitioned out by going to a um I, I went to a Kingdom Hall, I mentioned this in another video, in my first video, I believe. I went to a Kingdom Hall, a foreign language speaking Kingdom Hall. So I went to that Kingdom Hall and I was trying to figure things out, you know? So I went there and, um, and then, and I kind of, not to say lost complete touch, I, I would still hang out with the English speaking hall that I went to before, but gradually I kind of, you know, I started getting ready to transition to moves. And so that's what I did. I, I moved. And then when I got here, you know, I'm on um, certain like career uh, sites, you know, networking sites. I'm sure you can figure out which one I'm talking about. And one of the, I, w I used to be friends with some, I'm still kind of friends with or connected anyway with some of the, the brothers from those sites. And um, I, in this particular site, and you're now you're really gonna know what I'm talking about, but with this particular site, you can see who has viewed your profile. And this brother was checking my profile every like week. Every time it would say somebody viewed my profile, it was him. And I feel like to an extent, it, um, you know, he was seeing, he was trying to see what I was up to, you know, what my progress was. And the reason I say this is because this particular brother, um, when I went to, when I went to his congregation, he was like, like the head lead guy. Like there were three brothers that were kind of like at the lead and one of the brothers that I really, really liked that was like a, a older gentleman, like a grandfatherly type, but he was not one of those like pervy grandfatherly types that I had ran across that was always like an unpleasant surprise. He was actually really, um, <coughs> really legit. Like I liked him a lot and just very, one of those people that you can tell is really sincere. And, um, but guess what? He woke up. <laughs> so he left. He woke up and left. And this was long before I was on my journey whatsoever. And so, um, sure enough, he, um, so it was just two brothers left. And this was one of the, one of those brothers. And I remember at one point he was introducing me to someone. This is the brother that was following me around on, on LinkedIn, or pro viewing my profile on LinkedIn. And he was telling somebody about um, introducing me to someone, I believe. And um, in introducing me, he told somebody, um, this is Liz. She grew up as a Jehovah's Witness and she left, but life kicked her butt and now she's back. And I remember when he said that, I was thinking, I don't know what, you, what? Life kicked my butt? What do you mean? Like, 
You know what I mean? Like I was just thrown by that, that he would even make that assumption. I never told him that life kicked my butt. Um, and, and life had kicked my butt, but I feel like life kicks everybody's butt <laughs> when they're in their 20s. Um, <laughs> regardless, like it wasn't anything out of the norm. Like my experience was actually quite, you know, decent. The only thing that was kicking my butt was that I was still indoctrinated in a sense. And so I was confused and depressed by my conflicting beliefs and desires. You know what I mean? And so that was the only thing. But either way, I was like, no, actually, life's been pretty good to me. Like, I went to school. I, I've graduated. I have a really good job. I'm making more than probably half this congregation. Um, and I'm younger than a good 99% of the congregation. So it was like, you know, I was just, like, confused at what he'd said. And um, and so I feel like, again, I feel like that's that's a, a culture within Jehovah's Witness religion is that when you leave, you know, bad, bad things are going to start happening to you and you should have stuck to Jehovah and, and you know, they, they use people as a, um, what is it, as a cautionary tale. You know, everybody becomes a cautionary tale. And so there's a part of me that thinks he was looking at my profile to see, you know, what was going on with me or whatever. And, and you know, he didn't know whether I was still going to the Keenum Hall or not, but I'm, I'm going to kind of assume that he knows that I stopped going because, uh, my, my, um, file I'm sure had been passed along. And then from that point on, it, it stayed stagnant there for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, and I was not there anymore. And my resume said that I was in California. So I'm sure he knew that, um, I'm sure he knew that I was no longer uh, going to the Kingdom Hall. And so, with that said, like, you know, I was being watched. And I was constantly, like, updating my resume <laughs> to say, like, to show all of the different jobs that I was getting and, and internships and connections that I was making and that kind of thing. And awards that I was winning and stuff like that. And so, I, I made sure to, to update these things mainly because it's a good thing to do for my career you know what I mean like that's what you're supposed to do is constantly show that you're improving and making connections and that kind of thing and so that's what I did that's got to be hard to make people believe that um you know sticking to sticking to Jehovah and sticking to the organization is what will guarantee you success in life or or you know what I mean like he there's no way for him to say yeah she got all these things but she's not happy he wouldn't know you know what I mean and so you know that's that's what it is they they constantly have to make people feel like they um will they will fail as soon as they leave the religion or that um life is just not going to go their way and if it does then they say oh satan is rewarding them now but then they're not going to get anything after that and so on and so forth so i'm making this video to show you that <laughs> i'm still waiting like you know it's nothing at this point has happened to make me regret my decision to leave and i'm not saying that my decision to leave was based on financial success or you know worldly success whatever however you may define that my um my definition of success and my reasons for leaving was because I wanted to be happy and I knew that I didn't want to be there anymore I could there was no way for me to be happy and to be a Jehovah's Witness I knew that and and so that's why I left and you know I was right I'm happy now um and again you know life has its ups and downs there are days where I'm like oh you know my life is the worst life ever and you know but then I get over it and I <laughs> you know I'm and I'm thankful and I'm and I'm happy and blessed to be where I'm at and to experience what I've experienced in life you know what I mean I get over it I'll put it like that long story short I get over it and and I'm able to enjoy the life that I do have so um that's why I'm making this video and um I kind of want to ask you guys like what do you do to uh to you know enjoy life now that you are an ex-Jehovah's Witness what would you like to tell people um, about leaving the religion what would you like people to know that you know hopefully will make them realize that they're better off outside of the religion for me the freedom to be able to do whatever it is that I want to do in life is just I love it 
Um, and also, I like the ability to be able to pick my friends. This is another thing that um, was mentioned in the podcast, in um, JT and Lady C's podcast. They talk about being able to pick and choose who you're around. Um, that is one thing that I've had the hardest time with. Um, you know, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I always, I never knew, um, you know, how to choose friends. I was nice to people no matter what, because I felt like that's what I was supposed to do. Just constantly be, um, you know, overly nice to people that didn't really deserve it or, or, um, be, feel lucky to have friends or to have anybody that would want to hang around me and that kind of thing. So there were a lot of, um, times where I was like overly nice in situations where I did not have to be. And, um, Ooh, that's a tight spot. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, you know, this is something that I, I still to an extent struggle with, but not, not as bad as I used to, you know what I mean? Now I realize that I can live my life however I want and I can make friends however I want and with whoever I want and I don't have to be friends with people that I wouldn't want to hang out with if I don't want to hang out with a 55 year old man <laughs> you know in field service I don't have to do that you know what I mean if I don't have to um hang out with a um grumpy uh person then you know yeah this is a big ass spot oh, I'm sorry um but yeah, if I don't have to hang out with somebody that I don't want to hang out with, then I don't. <laughs> and it's lovely. It's a great feeling. I don't have to walk the streets and tell people that I want to, you know, that I want to get out and feel service more. I don't have to want to get out and feel service more. You know, my Saturdays are back. I love that. I love this. Today is Saturday. I'm recording this on Saturday. I'm going to a barbecue. I'm hanging out with a whole bunch of cool people. And hopefully I'm going to meet some cool people that might help me get a, you know, some, I can work with them and that kind of thing. And so, yeah, like my life is a lot better. I'm a lot happier. And, um, you know, that's really all, all that I can say. I make these videos so that I can inspire others and also so that I can kind of show anybody who is scared to leave, you know, you may be giving up a lot. And, and I don't, I don't doubt that whatsoever. As many of you know, I, I've been lucky in that I, I was not fully in, in, um, I wasn't fully emerged into the religion so much so that I gave up everything um so for many of you may feel like you're giving up everything but you're not you know what I mean you are gaining your life back and that's a beautiful thing nobody can give that to you but you so this is your life take you know take advantage of the time that you have on this planet you know what I mean take advantage of take your life back and know that there are people out here that are enjoying it. I get so many messages every single time. Like it never ever fails. If you scroll through my um, videos, you'll find these messages too. I get so many comments from people who are Jehovah's Witnesses and are like, Lizzie B, you know, come back. You know, the world's about to end. We all about to die. <laughs> you know, everybody's gonna die. Come back. And I'm just like, Ooh, you know, like, no, or what? Like, do you even see my videos? This and and forgive me for this video for rambling and stuff on this video. I, I'm gonna edit it the best that I can, but there's a part of me that just wants to put it up as it is. But um <clears throat> yeah, I get so many comments like that, and I'm like, you don't understand the freedom and love and happiness that I have now that I was not able to have before. You know what I mean? How would you how could you ask me to give that up? And of course it sounds like, oh, you, you know, Satan gives you temporary happiness, but it's like, you can't tell me that the constant Armageddon dreams of people dying and, and being on fire and breaking into my home and killing me and, and torturing me and, and doing all kinds of horrible things to me and my loved ones and people that I know, all of the death dreams, um, all of the depression, all of the guilt that I used to feel, all of the the um just restriction and feelings of of inadequacy and that god didn't love me and that that god would never forgive me for my for wanting 
to not be in field service and for thinking that Holy Spirit missed over me. All of these feelings that I had constantly where I had to be around people that made me feel bad sometimes. Some of them made me, you know, were, were lovely people. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, being around people that I knew brought me down, brought my energy down because they're also thinking about Armageddon and the end of things. And then if something positive and good happened in the world, everyone given that the, the they'll be yelling peace and security before the end comes. So I couldn't even enjoy the good moments in life because because I felt like, oh my God, that means the end is about to come. You know what I mean? So feeling like that constantly, all the time, it's not good for your physical body. It's not good for your mental body. It's not good for your spiritual body. Um, and so, no, I don't want that anymore. I don't, I don't want to, you know, I still have the nightmares, unfortunately, but not as much. But I don't want to live my life feeling like... I'm going to die or everybody I know is going to die. You know what I mean? And that the end is about to come and I'm, I can't enjoy my life. I can't do things that I want to do. Um, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I remember one of the sisters asking me if I would go bird watching with her because that's what they like to do. And they were talking about bird watching. And I remember just thinking, I don't want to do this. I don't even want to hang out with y'all. <laughs> like, I don't really even know y'all that much. And I'm sure you're nice people, but I wouldn't hang out with you guys if I was given a choice. And bird watching? No, I don't want to do that. Um, but I told her, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Because I think in the Watchtower that week, it was talking about hanging with people that you wouldn't normally hang with. And, and you know, and younger ones learning from older people. And again, I have nothing against that. But you know, I'm so happy those days are over because you know how much guilt I felt at not wanting to bird watch with 70 year old women. Yeah, I felt a lot. I felt a lot of guilt um, over things that I didn't have to feel guilty about. You know, I felt like I don't want to say I wasted years of my life because I don't believe in wasting anything. I've learned from those years, so it's not wasted. But at the same time, it's like these are the things that people comment on my videos and they're asking me to return to this religion that took so much from me. No, no, the answer is no. To all of you who are Jehovah's Witnesses that want to comment um, that I should come, no. I'm so happy. And I think I want you all to know how happy you can all be too. So let me get to this barbecue so I can um, get on with the rest of my day. Thanks so much for watching. If you are an extra Jehovah's Witness, comment below with the things that you are enjoying about life now, um, how you're getting back at the Watchtower by living your best life. If you um, are, again, if you are considering leaving and you're wondering how it's going to be, you know, everybody's different. You, you have to choose your path, but I, but I can tell you from my purview, it's lovely on this side. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.